So hi, I am Tenixium and I love Pokemon. I play VGC a lot and I noticed a weird thing in the Scarlet and Violet metagame. This issue has been around since the dawn of competitive Pokemon and it looks like it is here to stay. Of course, I am talking about ginning Pokemon. So for those of you who do not know, VGC players sometimes use hack Pokemon to compete rather than make those Pokemon in game. And this issue is consistent at all levels of play. Now, my thoughts on hacking. I will never hack Pokemon or use hack Pokemon. I even joke about it on stream, how I keep family tree records of my Pokemon to show how I was able to get them in game. Now, my view of my opponent to hack varies on the generation. If I was playing, for example, Gen 5, and my opponent used hack Pokemon, I'd be kind of upset. But at the same time, I would understand. Gen 5 was particularly brutal for making Pokemon in game. But if you had to Gen 8, I would think that you are the most pathetic person on the entire planet. Say what you will about Gen 8 and all the controversies, but however, in terms of making competitive Pokemon in game, Gen 8 was by far without a doubt the best. We were so close to having the perfect in-game mechanics for making Pokemon, but then everything that Gen 8 built up, Gen 9 tore down. The new gimmick, Terrestrialization, is powerful and allows you to change the type of your Pokemon. Each Pokemon has a Terra type that is one of their normal typings, so a Pikachu you catch in the wild will always have the Electric Terra type, but what if you wanted to change the Pikachu's Terra type to say, Ground type. Well, that's okay. All you need is 50 Ground Terra Shards and poof, you're done. Now how do you go about getting Ground Terra Shards though? By completing the Ground Terra Raids. With the stronger raids give you more Terra Shards. So, how many Terra Shards can you expect to get from each raid? Typically, only 1 to 6. You can get 10, if you are really lucky and you beat a really hard Terra Raid. Ask any VGC player how long it takes to get 50 Terra Shards. The grind is brutal. Now, let's look at everyone's new pivot Pokemon. The sentient stack of 1000 gold coins, Goldingo. This Pokemon is a monster right now, with the terrifying move, Make It Rain. 120 base power, Steel type, hits both Pokemon. Because Make It Rain is a Steel type move, a popular Terra type for Godingo is the Steel Terra type. Godingo is a Ghost Steel Terra type, so you could catch one in the wild and have a good chance of it having the Steel Terra type normally, right? Wrong. You see, the only way to get Godingo in the game is to evolve Gimme Ghoul. Gimme Ghoul is a pure Ghost type Pokemon, so every Gimme Ghoul will have the Ghost Terra type. So that means you have to evolve Gimme Ghoul into Godingo and then collect 50 Steel Terra Shards if you want to change its Terra type. Oh, and Evolving Given Ghoul takes a long, long time. You need to collect 999 Given Ghoul coins in order to evolve it into Godingo. Next, you have an issue with IVs, the genes of Pokemon that influence their stats. So, Given Ghoul will never use the attack stat ever. It is a special attacker, so a small but optimal technique that players would do is to give their Godingos zero IVs in attack. This counters the move foul play, a move that does more damage the higher the attack stat of the Pokemon being hit by the move. So if Godingo has a higher attack stat, it takes more damage from the move foul play. On top of that, foul play is a dark type move, so Godingo is already weak to it due to its part ghost typing. Now, we have items that boost the IVs of Pokemon to the max, but we don't have items that drop the Pokemon's IVs to zero. Despite fans begging for one at Gen 8, when Gen 9 came out, we got nothing. So the only way to get Godingo that has zero IVs in attack is to find a Gimmigool that is already rare and just hope it has zero IVs in attack. If my math is correct, the odds of this happening are 0.521%. So, you have a strong Pokemon that is annoying to obtain, hard to prepare, and very hard to optimize. Oh, and also, you can't breed it. In my opinion, this creates an environment that promotes ginning. 
a popular data miner revealed that out of 50 runner teams used our competitions that use Godingo, half of those Godingos were actually hacked. And for the record, because I use Godingo, I just want to say that my Godingo, which I caught live on Twitch, just so happened to have either an IV of 4 or 5 in its attack stat based on an IV calculator that I used online. To be honest, I think that this issue is only going to get worse. Paradox Pokemon are now available, and like Godingo, some of them need to have 0 IVs in attack to be the most optimal, and others need to have 0 IVs in speed to be optimal in a trick room. Like Godingo as well, these Pokemon cannot be bred, so you essentially just have to roll the dice and hope you get lucky. I know this sounds depressing, but there is a way. Instead of being mad at people for using a quick ball to catch shinies, we can be non-toxic. Typically, when you are breeding Pokemon for a team, you can get a lot of Pokemon with good traits but aren't good enough to use in battle. These breed checks as they are called can be extremely valuable to other players because they can use them to breed your Pokemon. If you have good breed checks, consider putting them in the wonder trade for players to use. I will finish off by saying that if this video gets 10 likes in, I don't know, 2 weeks, I will live stream myself on Twitch building and trading either 100 Zero IV attack unaware for Cocos or 100 Zero IV pure and fast salt Nackleys. Two Pokemon that I think will have a place in Series 2 but can be pretty hard to obtain. Until then, don't forget that you are loved and that you matter, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.